Good afternoon, everybody. It's Grant here. Just wanted to come on here and talk to y'all for a minute about, actually more about the election and how it went and, and uh, what's to come in the future. So, <laughs> as I talked about the other day, we had a lot of successes, some losses, of course. Um, the election's still going on in some places. You know, the votes haven't completely finished, been counted yet. You know, since there were so many, you know, wait for overseas ballots because military votes matter too. You know, the the envelopes that were marked as of November 8th, you know, that whether they come in on time or not depends on the mail. Sometimes it takes days, you know, and then, it, then after that come in, you gotta count them all. Sometimes it takes time. So we just got some announcements from Nevada and Arizona in the past couple of days. And, and you know, Nevada elected a Republican governor, but elected a U.S. Senator, re-elected Miss um, Catherine to the U.S. Senate, so that's awesome. Um, and then we flipped the governor seat and the uh, Secretary of State seat in Arizona from red to blue. So that was a lot of work that they put in and all the hard work paid off. They had over 60% voter turnout. Meanwhile, here in Arkansas, we had only 50.5% turnout. So. Basically, what I'm saying is we elected our governor with only about 25% of the vote. Uh, just around that time, around that frame. So 25% of the state basically decided for us, you know, who our governor was. And that's not even including the people that aren't registered to vote. We have almost 1.8 million registered voters. Only around 900,000 people voted. So just barely over half of our Kansans voted which led to us having a Trump endorsed governor. Now, I feel like if we would have had more people get out to vote, it could have been a different outcome. It would be much more of a closer race for sure, I feel, especially if we had everybody registered that are eligible to register to vote and actually voted. It's probably not ever gonna happen 100% because some people don't wanna vote, but I would like us to get closer to that point where we have people voting more than 50% turnout, preferably, especially for midterms. Midterm elections are very important. Our whole legislature was up for election. We had some crazy ballot initiatives are on the ballot that we happily defeated. Some closer margins than others, but we defeated all of the bad um, ballot initiatives. So I'm super proud of us for that one, especially issue two, which would have made it harder to pass citizen-led initiatives like a minimum wage increase or marijuana legalization or anything that we want to pass from the citizen. So I'm super proud of us for, you know, voting against issue two. Also voting against issue one, that was the most popular one to vote against. It had over 60% of people vote against it, I believe. And that would have allowed the legislator, legislature to call themselves into session whenever they wanted. Being, you know, a f creating a more arena for partisan politics instead of getting business done. You know, I know that we're probably gonna have partisanship anyways with Sarah being the governor now, but I feel like we can definitely do a little more positivity in that aspect. So anyways, I'm gonna go over here and continue to walk. I'm walking and talking today. So anyways, that's our goal for the next election is to get more people registered to vote and for the most part, getting those people to go and actually vote is the gonna be the bigger thing here that we need to focus on. We need to focus on getting more volunteers because without volunteers, you can't really win uh, races and your campaign will not be as successful. And we need to add more things to our ballot for 2024. I know previously I said you know, definitely have mar um, recreational marijuana on the ballot that would decriminalize and allow for homegrown. I know that would get more people out to vote. That actually, the, the bill that we had originally would not have allowed either one of those things to happen. So it ultimately failed by a pretty, pretty good margin at that. Um, but, and I think it could have discouraged people from going to vote. They're like, oh, marijuana's on the ballot. And then you look at it, it's like, well, that's not a good bill. It's not a good thing to be on the ballot and it would not have been good if it passed. It would have benefited the big corporations and not the people. And it would have not released people from jail, which is wrong on so many levels since 
you know, marijuana being, you know, criminalized at the moment. It's keeping people in jail. So why would we want to let people make money off something while people are still in jail? So that's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. So I'm glad it failed, you know. Anyway, so I don't know if you saw it or not, but old three-time loser Trump. <laughs> That was just a Fox headline. I was I was joking, but anyways, Trump is announced that he's running for president again. President again, so that's gonna definitely increase turnout for 2024, and both the primaries and in the general. In my opinion, I don't know if he's gonna end up being the winner in the primary because I don't know if y'all saw it or not, but Fox has already said they don't plan on backing him in 24, and they're looking to lean into DeSantis, which was be. I don't know, quite a disaster as well, if that was to happen. Now I've seen polls between him and Biden and Biden wins significantly against DeSantis, which I'm not surprised because he's really far right and America's not far right <laughs> as a whole. So I definitely think that would be, it's gonna be interesting for sure come 2024 and how everything turns out. So I'm looking forward to that election and I really hope that it gets people to turn out to vote because we can elect better here in Arkansas if we get out and vote we need better than 50.5% turnout to change things and even even the 50.5% we did we did better than 2018 at least so the, we performed better than the last midterm election so I'm proud of us for that we can always improve more a lot of things that were shown in the in the midterm election with a little bit higher turnout was the fact that we elected um some good people um and some local races especially we had our first gay mayor up in north north of northern arkansas also there's a runoff happening uh soon for another runoff here in uh down in sheridan there's an uh openly gay man running for mayor of sheridan in grant county and his dad is actually the current mayor so he actually got the most votes, but you know, since the rules in that in that city, apparently they have to have a runoff now. So I'm really hoping that Justin Wise can win this in Sheridan, have the first openly gay mayor for Sheridan. That'd be such a, you know, that'd be a lot of more progress made in that city. I really would be so happy to see that being that's where I graduated from actually, even though I didn't live in the city. Um, I graduated from Sheridan High School back in 2012. So, <laughs> It'd be great to see them making some progress. Uh, another thing is, openly gay man down in Clark County has the most votes so far. I believe he's four votes ahead in the race for JP, Justice of the Peace. And uh, they're supposed to have the final count, I believe, this Friday. So I really hope that Zach Bledsoe can pull it off. And also, I don't know why I can't remember this guy's name. Okay. I think I got it now. Anyways, he won his race, and um, he's a Democrat down there in uh, Clark County as well. <laughs> Michael Ankton, I hope that, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I really like the guy. He's super nice. I met him before. He's a young man, and he wants to make change in his community. And he won his JP race. I'm so proud of him. And uh, up in what is it, uh, Craighead County, um, Garrett Barnes won his race for JP. So another young man who's an educator won his race so we have a lot of amazing people and even over here in um alexander in saline county saline pulaski county line there's um, some amazing women who ran for city office for mayor and uh, i guess it's some kind of city council other races but they're women of two of them are women of color and they won their races and another uh this white lady, what's her name? Uh, Crystal Herman. She's super nice, and she's ahead so far in her race for mayor. She actually got more votes than the current mayor, but uh, because of the rules in this race as well in this city, she's going to a runoff as well. So I wish the best for Crystal Herman. And if you live in Alexander, please vote for her for mayor. She seems like a woman that wants to make progress in the city. She's really determined and she has a vision for the city. She wants to make it inclusive, and I really, um, really want her to win, and I definitely, she's definitely got my support. So if you live in Alexander, please vote for her. 
for mayor of Alexander. Our mayor and Brian over there, he actually got reelected as well, running against Rhonda Sanders, which has shown support for people like French Hill, John Bozeman. And so I'm super happy to see that uh, Mayor Alan Scott won re-election by a few points in uh, Bryant's mayor race. So I'm super happy to um, see the mayor of Bryant get re-elected. So I'm just saying, guys, even though we didn't win big races like the governor's race, I know that was a, such a disappointment because we now have someone that's so divisive in there, backed by Trump. And the only way we can change things this is what I was told a couple years ago when I first got involved in politics. I was never involved in politics before. I didn't realize how much it affects our daily lives and it does in so many aspects. And I was just sitting there and somebody said, you know, if you ever want to change things for the better, you're going to have to vote for better. And then I don't know, something resonated with me with that. And I went and got registered to vote that day. Just went down the street, they had a little table, and I got registered to vote. And it's, it's, it's just as simple as that. And I've been involved since, ever since, and I, and I just see it all. So much has been made clear in these past couple of years, especially how much change that we need, and we can do it. It takes people like me, it takes people like Miss Susie Velez getting red people registered to vote, Miss Caroline Morgan getting out there and holding signs for people, knocking doors. I'm just saying, there's a lot of work to be put in, but it's so much fun, you know, especially when you see all these outcomes. My friend Andrew Lewis got elected to, uh, for city director Ward 6, I believe it is, uh, replacing Doris Wright, who is one of the least favorable members. So I'm super happy Little Rock gets a voice for the people that actually shows up for people. And that's the respect that I have for people. I vote for people that show up for people. That's me just like I voted for our mayor, Mayor Scott. I had not met him officially until a few weeks ago when he had a uh, um, town hall for the mayor's race. And I, he, I walked up to him and he knew me by name. Knew, be, knew me by name, guys. Sorry, it's cold and it's windy. And it's, wow. <laughs> but yeah, I, he shows up for the people nonstop. And that's why I voted for him. And that's why I'll continue to support him and everybody like him, like Andrea Lewis that was just elected. I support her because she shows up, shows up for the people. I show up for the people and I will continue to support people that show up for the people, no matter what. And, I, and one of these days, if we all get involved and stay involved, we will keep electing people that are for the people. And we can do it. Just gotta get in there and gotta vote and make a difference and we can do it. So I really hope that you all will get registered to vote if you're not already and continue to stay involved, continue to listen to these updates. I'm having some time off now after the elections for my, for my own election down to the elections that I supported, like my friend D. Sanders in Conway, who did a tremendous job getting 42% of the vote in an area that they gerrymandered to be, you know, more red. I'm glad her friend in the district over, District 56, Steve McGee, won his re-election by 10 votes. Tell me your vote doesn't matter. 10 votes, guys, come on now. And I was super happy and proud to say that I took my friend Stephanie to go vote in that particular race. And she was one of those 10 votes that led to him being re-elected. The one Democrat that Conway has elected and I'm so proud of, of him for winning re-election. And that just goes to show you that, that this is, <laughs> your vote matters. That from that race to down in Arkadelphia where Zach Bloodsoe is winning by four votes to down up there in Craighead County where they just defunded their library by 48 votes because of LGBTQ books in the library. Oh my God. Y'all are really gonna let these 48 old folks or bigots win over over us come on guys we outnumber them and you know we do and they're going to continue beating us unless we get out there and vote and help these people to overcome the hate and division because we're so much better than hate and division and we can come together we just got to get out there and vote because your vote can be the one that makes the difference believe it or not it can i don't know what it's up in the northeast massachusetts or something there's a couple of races right now that are winning with just one vote. The Democrat won with just one vote in two different races. 
So I'm just saying whether it's four votes, one vote, 10 votes, those last votes matter. And if you would get off the couch and help these candidates, and you could be that one vote that makes them win and makes their community have a voice, makes their community have someone that actually will show up for the people. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we could make a difference and we can and we will. It's just a matter of time. We gotta get more than 50% turnout, Arkansas. Come on, let's go for it. Let's go for over 60, please, for the 2024 or 70 or more. Come on, we can do it. We, and we can get more people to register to vote at, this, at the same time. And then we actually have a higher turnout. I know. My goal here is to get people to actually go vote, especially the ones that are registered and haven't voted. Let's go vote. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. Y'all have a good day. <laughs>